introducing our board. Um, I'm Jerry Burton, the Nevada Now president. And I think we have everybody. And I think Lenora is on vacation somewhere. Um, I can't remember where she was going, but she's, she's always traveling and camping. Um, so um, we have Trisha Methner. She's our executive vice president. Oh, you are on, Trish. I see her video now. Um, we have Eva Love. You've met Eva. She's uh, vice president outreach. Uh, Madalena Robertson, she is uh, media, um, what else do we do, but I usually have it on here, Vice President Media, but she does our website, she helps me with all of our graphics, and she's also a big help right now with the ERA committee on the national level, so she's kind of been recruited to do two jobs now, so uh, Sue Birch, she is our secretary, but she wears many hats as well, she also runs, helps for our PAC, and um, has recently uh, voluntold <laughs> to, uh, I've been calling it that, to head our legislative committee. So Sue's been very busy um, and I've been telling her, complimenting her on how organized she is. So <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> and Lenore Briley is our treasurer. Um, I don't believe she's on today. I think she was gonna be uh, to uh, have great internet where she's camping, so. Uh, that's our great board. Um, within our, our, as you all have, have come to meetings, we have a committee right now with our legislative committee. Um, we're hoping this year to start other committees on other topics um, and start getting more people involved. Um, Connie Monk and Shay Bacchus have agreed to join our legislative committee. We have other people today. Um, Donna West is another. We, and, so we're starting to kind of look over bills and I'm going to have Sue talk about that in just a second, just a quick overview. Our next meetings, um, probably through session, will be about the legislative, uh, the bills, um, having people on talking about their bills, uh, having other uh, coalition groups that we'll be working with come on our programs so we can work in coalition. So that's, you know, everyone is going to be looking at the legislative session. So that's pretty much what we'll be doing the next couple months. Um, but today, we kind of threw this meeting in because, um, as most of you know, I'm the chair of NOW's, uh, on the national level, I'm on the board. Um, I'm also the chair of NOW's 28th Amendment ERA committee. And um, thank you, Donna. And uh, as you know, it's my passion um, ever since, well, for a long time with the ERA, but meeting Senator Spearman and, and working on the, on the ERA on the national level is been very important and of course we're gonna have a state when uh voted on this year too so um we did have some uh to start off i'll introduce our speaker in just a moment um we did have some great news that uh senator carton and uh representative uh, jackie spear are going to drop the uh bill for the deadline it has to be reintroduced they've announced they'll do it on the 21st uh, on january 21st this day after inauguration, which means it's going to be a focus of this administration and our Senate and Congress, and I think Georgia, which we all worked on. I know our guest speaker, Jeanette Dean, really worked hard in Georgia as well. Um, this is why it was so important, as we all know. I mean, Georgia makes the difference with the Senate, and um, I think it's making the difference with their priorities as well. They feel like this could be the year for the Equal Rights Amendment, and so we're really focusing on that. Um, so um, we have uh, a bunch of actions we'll talk about after our speaker of, of ways we think that'll help uh, move this along and get it over the finish line. So, um, but first um, I have uh, watched Jeanette Dean through the years, but I hadn't actually met her. We had a wonderful uh, conversation. Uh, Jeanette is, and she'll tell us the story, but um, she is the one who went to Senator Spearman and said, you know, the Nevada women are, women are not in the Constitution. Nevada has not ratified, and uh, she'll tell us the year, but I believe it was before 2015 when they first brought it, and uh, I wanted to, we've had Senator Spearman on many, many times. She's, you know, a Nevada now favorite, of course, but uh, Jeanette really has a, the wonderful story of how it was brought to Senator Spearman, and then her activism until right up to today, and including going forward with the ERA is just amazing. So Jeanette, thanks for joining us, and I think it'll be fun for everyone to hear um, how we got where we are today. Well, thank you so much for having me. Great to see everyone again. Um, yes, it's been a, quite a long journey. Uh, this journey began in northern Nevada, 
and I wasn't able to meet some of you in Southern Nevada quite as much, but I was very active with a lot of the group chapters in Northern Nevada. And how it all began is um, I became an activist after the recession. And I began working on a lot of different issues, uh, climate action, Citizens United, uh, racial justice issues. We were in Carson City uh, protesting for the uh, loss of Trayvon Martin in Florida, uh, pushing the banks to stop foreclosures doing all types of activism, Citizens United, and some of the many groups I was working with on that were the Carson City Democrats, um, a Washoe Democrats plan, a lot of you know the Progressive Leadership Alliance of Nevada plan, and um, what happened was I did a lot of activism and I decided I wanted to complete my degree in political science. And I had started at USC after being raised in Minnesota. I went to California for college and I was going to actually work in the field of wildlife conservation because um, environmental issues are very important to me. And my mentor at the Natural History Museum of Los Angeles County said, Jeanette, you know, we have a lot of field scientists, and I know you'd be wonderful at that, but we really need more people that can uh, rally the public to get behind these issues, such as uh, saving wildlife and uh, promoting renewable energy. So I started to rethink my career, and I ended up uh, doing more in public administration and activism. So I decided after the recession that I wanted to complete that degree, and I chose political science rather than public administration. And uh, I added sociology to that, because at UNR, uh, you often need um, cross uh, classes in different areas. And the social movements and social change classes were very important uh, to promote human rights in political science. So as part of that, I did an internship at the Nevada legislature in 2013. And because I really wanted to be more active in it, I chose a 20-hour internship versus a 10-hour. And that allowed me, I worked with uh, Representative James Orenshaw, whose mother had really worked on the ERA while she was a legislature, legislator. But at the time, that wasn't on my agenda. I was really working on renewable energy, Citizens United, and we actually went through a whole session with the Democratic majority in both the Nevada Senate and the Nevada House. Uh, but that wasn't a, a resolution that was being proposed. And I had found out later that the last time it had really been pushed was in 2009 by uh, Peggy McLean who was planning, she started to introduce it, but budget issues began to consume the legislature and the Republican Senate majority seemed like such a huge obstacle. So the bill was sidelined. Now what happened in the summer of 2014, all of a sudden um, we realized, I, I was uh, called, by Donna Curtis and Marty McGarry of the Carson City Democrats. And they said, Jeanette, uh, there's a woman here in Nevada. She's traveled from San Francisco, and she wants to meet with uh, a movement leader in Nevada who could possibly help introduce the Equal Rights Amendment because Nevada's never ratified it. And I said, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. 
I've been studying human rights at UNR. I've been studying um, all the issues we need to work on. And I thought the ERA was already in the Constitution. And, you know, I feel I'm a pretty well-informed person, but this has not been high on the radar. So even I was unaware that it wasn't completely ratified. And what I did apparently understand was it had passed Congress, which it did, of course, in 1972, but it only 35 of 38 states ratified, as you all know. So I thought, well, my goodness, you know, I have so much to do on renewable energy and other types of dark money and politics, but this is egregious. I mean, we're a whole class of people, women, and also LGBTQ uh, people have so many rights um, in infringed upon. I said, this is going to be a huge effort, but I can't not be part of this. This is too egregious. We're going to have to put this front and center. And I thought, it really is disappointing, too, because we had the majority in 2013, and we could have passed it if it had been on our radar. But again, sometimes these issues, there's so many um, hot button issues that we are all working on. And that is the problem when corruption begins to take over a society. You're fighting so many fires, so many problems, that it's really hard to cover all your, you know, tackle all of them. But I realized this has to be done. So that woman was Helene Deboisier Swanson from San Francisco. And it was actually her husband's mother who was one of the first ordained Episcopal priests in the United States who was a woman. And it was her dying wish that the ERA be ratified. And she told that to her husband and Helene knew as well then. So Helene made it her issue, um, and she decided to take a pilgrimage uh, starting with International Women's Day in 2014. And uh, she started walking to all 15 states that hadn't yet ratified. So Nevada was, uh, of course, one of the first from California, and then she went to Arizona as well. So as I was thinking about this, um, I learned more and more that the progressive Democrats of America had been pushing this issue to PDA more and more every year, and John Johnson down in uh, Las Vegas. And so we talked about this, and uh, John had said, well, um, Harvey Munson, uh, I mean Munford, uh, Assemblyman Munford, African-American man in the Nevada legislature, has been a strong champion of many rights, and he would be willing to introduce it for us. And I said, that's wonderful, because um, we need a lot of allies, but I think we need to have this led by a woman, and a woman of color, because the women's movement has for many years in the past, sidelined strong women of color who are often hurt by these uh, forms of discrimination the most. So I said, there are two women in the legislature, women of color, who are very important. One is Representative Dina Neal, because it was her father who in the 70s really pushed for the ERA and she strongly supports it. And I said, I've also worked with Senator Pat Spearman in 2013 on a Citizens United issue, and she is a strong social justice champion. And what I love about her, she really fights fire with fire. She does not back down. And I said, 
we don't know how these midterms are going to work out. If we lose the majority in either house, we'll need fewer votes in the Senate. So I said, I really think we need to ask Senator Spearman if she'll introduce this for us. So would you all agree to that choice? And uh, they said they did. So I gave Senator Spearman a call, told her that regardless of who won uh, the majority, we wanted to make this a prominent issue and we'd like her to take the lead on it. And she said, uh, as a social justice champion, that she'd be happy to. So she started um, drafting the bill. And then I and others in Carson City and Reno started reaching out to politicians, different groups. And one of the first was Harry Reid, who was speaking at UNR. So I went to a meeting he was at talking to students, and I put him right on the spot. And I said, uh, Senator Harry Reid, you have not sponsored some of the legislation that would uh, pass up, uh, lift the deadline, pass the resolutions to lift the deadline. I said, certainly you agree that the ERA should be in the Constitution, don't you? And he said, yes, I do. Uh, you've been waiting long enough. This is a very important issue. And the reason I haven't been on it is because as majority leader, sometimes you allow your other uh, senators to sponsor bills first, and you let them get to that point, and then you weigh in. Uh, with your weight. And, but he said, I will start to champion this again now. So then I went to the Nevada Democratic Convention and we got others like um, uh, Assemblyman Flores, who had been a strong champion, who ran for Lieutenant Governor Lucy Flores. She was very strongly for it. And others, um, in Nevada. So that was what I called the first summer of the ERA in Nevada. And then we started running with the resolution in 2015. And we nearly got it out of committee. Patricia Farley was really um, on our side. She wanted to hear it and have a vote. We could have had a three to two vote out of the Senate legislation legislative operations and election committee, but Senate Majority Leader Roberson took it off the agenda that morning and let it languish. But we continued our protests and rallies. And then we decided, and as Senator Spearman likes to say, when we lost Citizens United by one majority vote, and I was just so devastated. She said, we live to fight another day. We will bring this back. And that was the Citizens United bill, which was passed in the last session or in 2017. So anyway, um, we brought it forward as SJR 16, Sweet 16 in 2015. And then it became such an important issue that by 2017, uh, we brought it back as SJR 2 and were able to pass it quite quickly. So the Women's March and Trump really brought a lot of women's issues in the limelight, uh, but we were continuing to build and it just snowballed and snowballed. And then we were able, I had asked Senator Spearman, Illinois is going to be next. And I said, it would be wonderful if our states would support each other. Would you please also go to Illinois and speak to some of the legislators there? And she said she would. And then after Illinois passed it, I asked um, the Republican 
who had strongly supported it in Illinois, Stephen Anderson, if he would please go to Virginia and help to get some more uh, support speaking with more Republicans. So it really became a coalition of state legislators working on these issues. And of course, you all know it was passed in Virginia January 27th of last year. So now we've just got to move forward. And I have always learned that the squeaky wheel gets the oil. If there's a will, there's a way. And we have to push on all fronts. There's different ways to win justice on any issue. And I don't think we should put our eggs all in one basket on any particular way. So I were part of Mark Herring's lawsuit, uh, pushing the U.S. archivists to publish this immediately. We're also supporting the congressional legislation that would lift the deadline, even though that lawsuit said the deadline isn't constitutional. So again, just like the Constitution has the 14th Amendment, if we have the proper Supreme Court leaders, the 14th Amendment would be enough to protect us because that says equal protection of the laws must be held up for every person. However, we know that those in the Supreme Court have used strict scrutiny um, uh, for other cases, but not for sexual discrimination. They use what's called skeptical scrutiny, intermediate scrutiny, that causes a higher bar that anybody discriminating must knowingly be trying to do that. They can't accidentally be doing it or whatever. So we'll make it crystal clear with the ERA. But that's why I'm saying even with the ERA, it matters who's in power. So just like we got the majority in the Nevada legislature, now we got the majority in Congress. We have a Democratic president. The Supreme Court may try to interfere with our equal rights. Um, but again, the RBG revolution continues. And even though at the very near the end of her life, she said that she wondered if we shouldn't start over because she was thinking more of process versus the necessity of the justice. Justice delayed is justice denied. And when procedure interferes with real-time human rights for everyone, we have to push the envelope and push the laws to be immediately changed. We don't have to start over if we keep pushing for the ethics. Um, so let's give it all we have. And remember, if there's a will, there's a way to get what we deserve right now. So any questions? Thank you so much. Yeah, we have a, if anybody has any questions, and then we'll start talking about some of our actions that we have. And um, I also wanted, to, I think she's still on, but Charlotte Gibson is, has joined our, our program and she's from Virginia and on the, the, the ERA committee with me on the national level. So welcome, Charlotte. <laughs> we have Virginia on with us. <laughs> Yay. Yay. I oh, I just wanted to add one more thing about sure. if there's a will, there's a way. I'd like everybody to remember, too, that the U.S. helped pass the Universal Declaration of Human Rights in 1948, as well as the Sustainable Development Goals in 2015. Both of those put human rights of equal rights in international law. So by the U.S. not having equal rights right this second, we are breaking international law, and so that cannot stand. Oh, 
Thanks. I'm just sending Senator Spearman a note just in case she's <laughs> she's going to join us. But hold on. Wins. There we go. Sorry about that. Um, did you see any questions? I didn't know if there was. Um, so one uh, DC said she would like um, Jeanette's email address, if that's OK. Yeah. Oh, that would be great. I Sure, I'll put that in the chat right now. I have a Gmail address, and I'd love to hear from any and all of you. Great. So um, while you're doing that, so the next thing we wanted to talk about, um, our uh, ERA, we're calling it the 28th Amendment ERA Committee on the national level, uh, worked with Madalena, um, helped us come up with some graphics and some um, ways that you can get involved and um, it has a home on the Nevada Now page. There's an ERA page. And what we're suggesting people do, right now we're working on getting some co-sponsors for the deadline, but Nevada is, is pretty lucky, <laughs> very lucky. We have um, almost, except for Amade, um, they'll, our other, yeah, our senators and Congress people are supporters of the ERA. They co-sponsored the last bill. Um, I talked to Susie Lee's office. She wasn't on there yet, but she has already agreed, obviously. She was at the, um, when Jackie Spears, uh, when they had a press conference two years ago, Susie, we were there, Jean and I, my husband, and Susie Lee was across the, <laughs> across the room, you know, waving. So we, we know she's a supporter. Uh, Horsford is a supporter. He's not on there yet, but I know he will be this week. And Dina already is, Dina Titus, and our, our senators have always been big supporters of the ERA. So we're pretty lucky here. But I mean, it doesn't hurt to send them a note and thank them and, and ask them to support it um, so that we can get, they feel like the, uh, the House will go quickly to vote because it already had last time for the deadline bill. Um, but the Senate may take a year so to get all the co-sponsors in place. So. Um, that, that means we've just got to get to work and, and get that piece done. Um, but on our website, we have a couple things. Oh, there you go. Thank you, Eva. Um, there is a petition on there that we're going to be sending fairly soon to Biden and Harris, asking them to instruct the National Archivist to uh, certify Virginia. Um, he certified Nevada. He certified Illinois. And so there's no reason he, no legal reason not to certify uh, Virginia. And uh, we feel that Trump instructed him to hold it up. And uh, now we have Biden. He's, he's been a supporter of the ERA even during his campaign. It was on his website. We know that Vice President Harris is, is a supporter. We, when she's visit, visited Nevada, we gave her one of Zoe's sashes. We asked her to support it. She's been very vocal to Senator Spearman. So we really feel like, you know, we have the people in place to, to instruct the archivist to put the ERA into the Constitution, but first we have to certify Virginia. So we're hoping you'll sign our petition. There's a link in the chat for all of this. Um, we have postcards that some of you have, I've delivered around, I printed some out, but you can print them yourselves. Um, on the back, we, you don't have to print the back of it. You you could just print it, and then that's more of an instructions, you know, on how to how it should look. And it's it's the size that will a thirty five cent um, postage will work. It's postage size, postcard size. So um, on our website, on uh, and I think the link is on there as well. There is uh, instructions on ad addresses to send it to to President uh, Biden to Vice President Harris, and also one to the archivist. So it's three postcards we're hoping that you'll send. Um, and then we also have our mask project. Um, I'm seeing some questions. I was just going to see what Donna was asking. Um, so our, let me just see, are we going to have, uh, well, we're going to try, Donna, to get social media. Certainly we will be doing it as the committee. We'll be doing it. We hope you'll help us uh, get some social media out there. I'm trying to get national now to, to promote it a little bit more and, and that's not happened yet. Um, so our masks, um, a lot of you have the uh, have purchased already the ERA Yes mask. Uh, Zoe and I worked, and most of you know Zoe Nicholson, longtime ERA activist and friend of Nevada Now. Zoe is making the masks for us. Um, she helped us come up with a new 
uh, logo for this is a, a, a sanctioned by National Now. Um, it does say uh, National Organization for Women around the outside of, of the circle and also the words of the ERA are around inside the circle. And it's easier to see when you see the, like on the ERAS tip jar, you can see the language a little bit better. But uh, so we're selling the masks. Um, Zoe's making them, hand making them. If you follow her on Facebook, you'll see today she has a, a whole ironing board full of ERA masks because we've been having a lot of people purchasing them. For each mask, uh, they're $20 and $5 goes to the committee for our project. And then we're also asking for donations, which is why there's a tip jar on our website. Um, the goal is to have masks, um, and I'll tell you how we're going to get them to them, but to Congress and Senate supporters of the ERA, um, probably they'll be going on March 8th. Katie, that most of you have met in one of our programs with Vote Equality, she was with uh, VA Ratify ERA. She is one of the key people, Charlotte Gibson, who's on our call also with, with Virginia now, in getting Virginia ratified. Uh, Katie was on the ground with her organization and she plans with Vote Equality to um, take the, I believe she's taking the RVG, she calls it. They, when we had her on our program, you got to see her with her motor home that went down to Georgia. She also went around the South to get people registered to vote. She had everybody sign the, the uh, motor home. It's wrapped with ERA information all over the thing. And uh, now Nevada now sticker is on the back because we helped um, with some of her uh, donations to help her program. So she has agreed to take our masks to Congress and the Senate to the ERA supporters. She's visiting them on March 8th to take some artwork that they're doing a, a clock that says, uh, I think it's like time's up for equality, something like that. So because she plans on going, she's agreed to take our masks along with her um, with a letter asking for uh, support, thanking them for their support of the ERA and, and asking for their support going forward. We're also sending them to uh, President Biden, uh, Vice President Harris. Um, we, Zoe and I sent one to the archivist for his birthday, but in December, but we will be sending another one to him. And so the idea is that this, we're going to ask, and um, our legislators and our, our Senate and Congress in Nevada have already have some, but they probably will get another one. But we're thinking, you know, if you see the ERA yes masks on the Senate floor and the, in Congress, if you see, you know, wouldn't it be wonderful to see Vice President Harris with one on that it's just going to be a real big visual to see. And it's a, a fundraiser that we're working on. So um, we could use your help on donations for that. Um, Nevada Now has given some money. Uh, we did get a really nice amount of money from Virginia Now. Um, Illinois is going to work on a, a, having their own program. And uh, so we, uh, Maggie Goodwin from Conne Connecticut has been helping me call Now Chapters to try to get them to do what we're doing today, to get involved, buy masks, sign the petition, write postcards, and hopefully we're doing this all over the country. And, but Nevada now is the first one to have a program, I figure, lead by example. So I'm thinking my chapter, my board people, and um, all of you for helping us kind of launch this. And uh, if you could sign the petition, that'd be great. We have, I think, 174 people have signed it so far. Um, if we can get that number up, we'll get that to Biden and Harris pretty quickly here. Um, in the next couple of weeks, we want to get that to them. Um, and the postcard search, you know, I think they're very distinctive. And I think as they start, you know, heading in and people are, uh, thank you, Jeanette, she signed five minutes ago. Um, as people start seeing these postcards arrive, I think they're very distinctive, with, have some personal message written on the back. And again, if, if you can help us with any donations, um, we can get, uh, if we have chapters or, or we're asking them to, uh, come up with enough money to maybe cover their senators and Congress people in their state, but any additional money we get will cover those states that we don't have donations from. So anyway, um, for those of you who have your postcards, I, I took some around this week. Um, there is on the, uh, I think it's on the chat, the uh, website and right on there where the postcards are is the script. It's uh, just one or two lines. You kind of pick which one you want. And Thank you, Madalena. She just put it in the chat. 
and uh, then the address on there. Right now we have the transition address. We'll probably change that come uh, Wednesday to their physical address once they've moved into the White House and got that horrible ban out of our White House um, <laughs> and get them moved in to, to take over. Um, so anyway, I appreciate any help you can give, any ideas you have. Um, we have, a, I don't know if Senator Spearman's on yet. I asked her if she's gonna join us. We do have the state ERA um, that's going to be reintroduced. We, we voted on it already uh, last session. It'll be coming around again this session and then it hits the ballot so we can be a state that has our own ERA in the constitution in, in Nevada. So um, any questions or ideas you have, um, we can open up the floor and talk about it. And I was just looking in the chat to see what we had too, so. And then also, if you want to be um, um, receive ERA updates with the committee, um, let me know. I I'm keeping kind of a separate list of emails to we just sent out. We're having a meeting on Saturday, next Saturday, um, to do more planning and to do. Uh... Oh, great! Thanks, Donna. Um, to start doing more planning, to come up with ideas because this will be a, a year long, you know, process. We we want to kind of start uh, with our actions, but um, thanks, Audrey. Um, so any ideas you have, uh, the, the committee is, is uh, it's me, Charlotte, who's on the call, um, and uh, Senator Spearman is on our ERA committee with now, and uh, Zoe, and uh, Kabi Hoffman, and John Erickson, you've met from Hollywood now, he's on as well, I think that's everybody. And, uh, you know, we have a great group and then we've got a good working group right now that's attending planning meetings and, and helping us. So. so I thank you for any help you can give us. And, um, and I've got some people saying they want to join the committee. That would be great. And uh, Sue, do you want to talk about the, um, so we've covered the, and if we get Senator Spearman on, we'll, we'll, We'll break in there, but I wanted Sue to talk a little bit about our legislative uh, committee um, and hope you'll join us with that as well. Um, thanks, Jerry. Uh, we uh, had our we, we announced the legislative committee at last week's meeting and uh, bless all your hearts. We had a good response and a very good meeting last Wednesday and um, tossed around a, a, a lot of great ideas. Um, currently, we are looking at the um, BDRs that um, coincide with uh, NOW's core issues. So we're looking at that so we can narrow it down um, to a, a, a reasonable list that we can, we can follow and track. Um, uh, we're also reaching out to... Uh, some of our organizations uh, that we've worked with in the past and some that we've never worked with to see uh, what, they're, what they're following and how we can help as a, as a coalition to get some other bills passed. Um, Sandra Cosgrove, you are amazing with your meeting yesterday on uh, communicating with legislators. We are going to be setting up a web page on the Nevada Now website. Uh, get ready for me to call you Madalena, um, uh, that will have resources to help have everybody get started, get involved, um, information as to what we're, what we're tracking and uh, different things. The one suggested suggestion that came up um, at our meeting was if you really, you want to get involved, but you don't know how, um, a good way to start is to follow the committee meetings and that information is posted on the state legislator website, and I'm gonna throw it in the chat in a, in a second. Um, so we are still looking for volunteers, and if you wanna watch those committee meetings and, and report back to us what's, what's going on, um, I think we're gonna be um, really out in front, being proactive as opposed to reactive um, on what's going to be a, a very, very tough legislative session. Um, so I'm going to uh, throw some information in the chat if you want to be involved. My email's in there, um, and I think I, I, I think we're uh, we're we're going to be able to go after uh, everything very very strongly in a in a very difficult year. So 
Um, that's what I've got, Jerry. Thank you. So I hadn't heard from Senator Spearman. I was kind of stalling to see if we get <laughs> if we get her on. She was in a meeting, and um, just I, I think most of us know this, but it was SJ Res eight that was introduced by Nicole Canizaro last session, um, and it passed right at the end. They kind of I think it was thrown in, wasn't it, Connie? Yeah. And uh, so it'll be in the 2021 uh, legislature, they'll be uh, voting on it again, and then it goes to the ballot. So we have a process, but uh, it, we definitely want to make sure we have our state ERA. And um, so we'll be promoting that Nevada Now will, for sure. Um, and hold on one second, Sandra, definitely. Um, uh, so what the other thing that, like Stu was saying, we kind of are looking for bills that, that, that we can work in, in conjunction with other groups, but also to kind of find some that we can spearhead. Um, I heard about one, I think that a young woman uh, brought about period products in school. She's 15. I want to find out more about that and how we can help her with that bill. Um, Jenny Littner is on the phone I, or on the thing. Um, I think her, con her uh, representative is going to be carrying it. So, um, it, it's B. It's B. Duran's bill. B. Duran. That's right. And I think Jenny's working with her. So um, that that's one we're looking at to to bring attention to. So if you have a bill that really that you hear of that you think Nevada now should be really bringing attention to, um, and then we'll be working in coalition with other groups as well as we did with the Nevada Trust Nevada Women's Act last time. Um, we work with NARAL and Planned Parenthood, and we worked on you know many different. We were so successful last session, and this session is going to be tougher. We all know because of the of the lack of of money. But possibly Biden is talking about sending money to states. I mean, that could change things just a tiny bit, anyway. Um, so it's going to be a a tough session. But uh, I know Sandra wanted to say something about the stimulus money, so that's that ties in with that, Sandra. So like you, um, as soon as I heard that, that you know we've got a stimulus bill that just passed, and we're probably going to get another one. Um, I reached out to some legis of the legislative leadership and I said, great, does this mean you're going to be adding back in some more bills or there's going to be more money? So, well, you know, it's not going to be as draconian. And they said, yes, with a caveat that like, for instance, the higher ed money in a regular session, the higher ed money comes from the legislature and then goes to ENCHI. So we start with the legislature, you know, then we go and talk to the regions. But like this last round of stimulus dollars, the money's going right to the regions. So there might be some times where as we're following money, where we may need to show up at the regents meeting instead of the legislature, depending on where the money goes. So we're going to have to kind of track that, because if it's going directly to Health and Human Services, we may need to all email Richard Whitley, as opposed to talking to our legislat legislators, because that's where the money went. So that might be a little twist in an already exciting legislative session. Yes, and that's why we're going to be working with you in coalition. You can keep us up. I'm, I'm making sure Sue is attending all of your meetings and, and we'll be working together and uh, and some of the information that you provided we'll be putting on the website so uh, we'll our legislative website will have the Nellis information how to Sandra's already done an amazing job with a how to navigate the the Nellis uh, the the website and uh, we that way we don't have to reinvent the wheel so thank you so much. Did anybody else, I, I see that Madalena was saying uh, it didn't go through, Madalena. Somebody was trying to make a, a donation and it didn't go through. So um, if you have any problems, you can text me and we can work through that. So I think, I think it was Deborah. So Deb, if you have a problem, just let me know and we can work on that. So. I think I heard also that Senator Ivana Cancella was nominated to Department of Health and Human Services. So I know she'll be missed in the legislature, but she was also the main sponsor of the Equal Rights Amendment uh, for Nevada's ratification So she, with Senator Spearman in 2017. So she's another champion for the ERA that we have in Washington, D.C. now. 
And Aaron Ford is another one that we, we haven't mentioned. He was the majority leader in 2017, correct, Jeanette? And uh, he's now being, of course, attorney general. We are so lucky to have an amazing attorney, attorney general. But he's joined the attorneys general that you mentioned, Jeanette, in Illinois and Virginia and uh, for the case against the archivist to try. So as Jeanette said, it's, it's all ideas. If you want, we're trying to remove the deadline. We're trying to instruct the archivist to to publish the ERA this year. Um, there's going to be, of course, legal cases, uh, not just what the attorneys general are doing, but also after the ERA is published, we know that then the slew of you know court cases will happen, and and that's you know another battle. But we can't control that part. No. <laughs> we can get this part done first, and then. Um, and we want Nevada, and, and I know Illinois, I just talked to the president of Illinois now, they're all in, and of course, Virginia, two of the people in Virginia are on our committee, uh, Connie Cordovilla and Pat Roos from Virginia are the ones who sent us a very generous donation of $500 from Virginia now mm -hmm. towards our campaign. Um, so, you know, these, oh, those three states and, and many more are, are really invested in the Equal Rights Amendment. Nevada, I mean, most of you have been working with me through these last couple of years. And then before that, um, many were involved when Jeanette was working on it in Senator Spearman. So um, we have, as we all know, we have a great group of activists in Nevada. Most of us have helped each other through the pandemic. <laughs> and, and are kept our sanity with, with Trump by keeping our head down, getting the local work done um, and the national work you know, that we're doing. Um, I, I appreciate you all. It, it's, uh, I don't know about you, but one of the things I was thinking we might wanna add to some of our meetings going forward is something to, I, I was at a meeting the other day with Katie at, at uh, Vote Equality with VA Ratify ERA and she had somebody come on to do uh, chair yoga and it was one of the more delightful things. I'm, I'm thinking, eh, I'll skip that. And it was delightful. I'm starting to think we need to have some, like, you know, in our meetings, maybe take a few minutes and do a chair yoga or have somebody come and, yeah, would that be fun? So I, I've seen a couple of people here locally. Um, I think there's a, a woman who used to work at one of the Congresswoman's office that's doing it. Uh, and they do it, like, you know, online. So I don't know about you, but I, I'm I'm struggling. The last little bit has been more difficult. I've I've had personal reasons, but also you know we're all trying to help each other out. But this this quarantining is getting old, and uh, I know some of you are getting vaccines. That's fabulous. I I just heard from Zoe Nicholson. She is getting hers on Tuesday. And um, that's delightful because, you know, she could start doing her programs again and maybe we can all meet in person again. Wouldn't that be great? So um, I can't wait to get mine. I heard somebody, I was getting a test run the other day and um, somebody said, oh, I don't, the guy who was doing the test said, I'm not sure I'm going to get mine. And I said, I'll take yours. <laughs> you know, can I have yours then? Because I really feel like we need to all get it. That way we can all get together and we can all, um, hang out together and I miss you know wine nights with Connie and and you know our meetings with Nevada now and I've seen on Twitter where people are starting to say what they miss and it's just extensive you know what we're missing right now so I appreciate you all it certainly helped us get through this well Jerry you know 2021 doesn't technically start till Wednesday at, I have heard people at, say at 12.05 I heard someone say the other day that that'll be our New Year's Eve. <laughs> let's yes. start, you know, yes. January. Let's start it all over again on the January twentieth. Is our is our 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 beginning of twenty twenty one. I think is, that's we're a still in, idea. We're still in twenty twenty. If we could just get through this next couple of days without too much violence, um, it certainly will be wonderful. So. Um, Jeanette, do you have any last minute words for Nevada activists before we go? Uh, just keep it up. Uh, you're inspiring the country. The trifecta that you have in your state is so valuable, like Virginia, where you have the governor's seat and the two houses, the Senate and the House. When you have that power, the public needs to push, push, push for as much legislation as they can, because we never know when those windows of opportunity will 
end for some unforeseen reason. And Virginia has been doing a great job as well, being a beacon for the country uh, with that power and using it to advance human rights in so many areas. So this is the time to push, push, push. And uh, good luck, and we'll keep it up all across the country. Uh, Thank you for joining us, and thanks for all you did for Nevada. You you were one of the key people who got this going, and then that, that's what re-energized the country. Is people said, "What's that about Nevada?" And now it's just you know carried through through the country. So it's pretty Happy fabulous. To. We're very proud. Thank you, everyone. Happy to. All right, thanks, and uh, we can unmute everybody, and um, we thank you for your support. We hope you'll sign the petition, buy a mask, um, send a postcard, um, anything you need to have help, we'll print some more. If somebody's having trouble printing them, um, we could get some more printed, and I can bring them to you. Um, I think you have my email, but it's just jerry, J-E-R-I, at nevadanow.org. I'd be happy to bring you some if you're having trouble printing them out. It's just printing on cardstock, and there's instructions on the website, so... But let's get everybody involved and let's get this done this year.